Good morning, Dr. Bibas, and uh, welcome to uh, the talk that we are having uh, routinely. So today, uh, the topic we picked up is genetics in new drug targets and treatment of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. What, what we would like to discuss is from your experience on the genetic field, uh, what is the future for NAFLD and what are the possible drug targets uh, for NAFLD? See, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease has several risk factors with a polygenic uh, inheritance uh, background or multifactorial uh, inheritance. However, currently the area that looks very promising for drug discovery are the regulations of lipid and glucose uh, metabolism. For example, GLP-1 signaling which is well-known pathway for inducing insulin secretion and glucose homostasis. This could be a great target. And, uh, Therefore, if the patient has insulin resistance, then targeting this pathway would not work. And therefore, we need to look at new targets. Okay. So, in, in such a case, uh, can we assume that if we make a model with insulin resistance would be a great model for NAFLD? So the model uh, insulin resistance and genetic predisposition also could be a better work. For example, genome-wide association studies, we call it WAS, have identified association between some gene variants such as PNPLA, uh, that is 3, and uh, TM6 genes, and NAFLLD. With such a model, of, uh, uh, model, a number of personalized genetic screening and personalized therapies have been uh, you know tested or can be tested okay so what you're saying is let's not have only a particular receptor target but also look for a model that can express fatty liver but can also have uh, a predisposition yeah. so with the genetic knowledge on the subject thus far we can use it as a uh, prognosis, so, prognostic screening, yeah. and also use it to identify new targets Target, for drug discovery. Yeah. Yeah. For example, if we look at the drug gene interaction, let us take the example of Alporate. Alporate has shown to inhibit mitochondrial oxidation in rodent livers. It is already in fact. <coughs> Hence, it acts through the PNPLA3 pathway, where setin is another molecule that acts through both PLPLA3 and TM6 pathways, and quercetin is also an antioxidant, and therefore, it has multiple physiological effects. So, this could be a good method to identify compounds. Okay, so, so what you're saying is with, with the genetic knowledge we have in the center of all this, we can use drug gene interaction studies to identify some of the best compounds out there in the industry. Yeah. And how do you think the geographies would help in this particular you know, studies that you have designed or you are thinking of planning? Okay, so zebrafish as a model of NAFLD is quite well established. If you dose zebra fish with corticosteroids, they will develop a fatty liver. And if you knock out some of the predisposition genes in the zebra fish, it's a fatty liver disease with a predisposed condition. Okay. So you pick up this zebra fish and sequence all the RNA in the animal, you will get some of the targets for NAFLD. And that is a simple and quick way to identify new targets. Uh, for my affinity. So thank you for your time and uh, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you.